NASA developed a handheld laser welding technology about a decade ago uh, for use on the Space Shuttle main engine nozzle coolant tubes. The original system was a pretty large uh, system that we developed uh, in, in conjunction with some industry partners. Uh, but really the modern technique that we developed was the handheld laser welding torch with a series of integral safety features on it to make sure that it was safe uh, for the technicians out in industry uh, and at NASA here to use. So some of the safety features that we have on this are interlocks uh, for the room that we're working in which will power the laser off uh, if, if somebody walked in the room. The other safety features are of course an operator switch uh, on here that can be turned on and off, a what we call a dead man switch that has to be depressed in order for the laser to operate. One of the other safety devices on the torch is the use of proximity detectors. These proximity detectors uh, must have the torch within a certain range of the material in order for the laser to be enabled. This torch operated off uh, 240 volts, uh, so it did take some special power uh, requirements. We did have an operator uh, panel on this, uh, which allowed us to change our gas flow, enable the laser, and also enable our foot pedal. The foot pedal and the, the laser system itself, we were trying to replicate a tungsten inert gas or a TIG welding torch so that welders were familiar with this technology. One thing with the laser over a TIG torch, the TIG torch you have a very difficult time seeing. With the laser torch, you're only required to wear the laser safety goggles, which makes viewing of your welds uh, much easier. Once we had developed this system, we realized uh, the benefits of the handheld laser welding, and we tried to improve upon that system significantly and one, reducing the size of the system, particularly reducing the size of the torch. We included all the same safety features on this system that we did with the previous generation system, including the proximity detector, the operator switch or the dead man button, uh, the enabling switches on the laser itself, and also an interlock for the room that we're working within. One of the advantages with the smaller torch is being able to use off-the-shelf gas cones uh, that operators would be familiar with from the TIG welding process. One of the big advantages of this smaller laser system is the ability to use 110 volt power instead of the 240 volt power. One of the other things we'll show is the reduced size of the torches themselves, so it's a much more ergonomical package for the laser operator. One of the things that enabled us to reduce the size of the torch is using a much smaller fiber optic cable, uh, and that was from the fiber laser, using the fiber laser. We used the same foot pedal that we did with the old system that allows the operator to vary the power real time uh, as lasing operations are taking place. Some of the applications that we developed this for, originally it was for the space shuttle main engine nozzle coolant tubes uh, where we have, have to put a very precise uh, weld or braze into the coolant tubes. They're very thin metal uh, and you can uh, actually damage adjacent tubes if you put too much heat into them. So with the handheld laser welding, uh, the operator has control with the foot pedal over how much heat they can put into the part uh, and make sure that they're not damaging uh, any of the other tubes around it. That was the original application that we developed almost 10 years ago on this. Since then we reduced the size of the torch and also increased the power of the torch which has allowed us to do welding of some super alloys uh, such as the Haynes 230 on J2X nozzle extension. These are some examples of some of the welds that we've been able to do with that very small heat affected zone on those welds. NASA and industry partners have completed research and development in advancing of the handheld laser welding system. NASA is currently using this on several programs as well as some DOD programs. 
There are several other industries where this technology is applicable, such as medical, aerospace, and mold making industry. NASA is very excited about this emerging, game-changing technology and looking forward to working with other industry partners on this.